Welcome to Prajim Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 4 of SQL Server. In this session, we'll understand how to add a default constraint. In part 3 of this video series, we have seen how to create tables. Specifically, we have created TBL person and TBL gender tables. And we have also seen how to add a primary key and a foreign key constraint. If you remember, in TBL person in TBL person table we mark this ID column as a primary key and gender ID as a foreign key and along the same lines in TBL gender table we mark the ID column as its primary key now if you look at the sample data that we have got in these two tables okay this is how we have the sample data and if you look at the columns in TBL person table you know we have got four columns here the first three columns ID name and email they have a not null constraint meaning whenever you insert a row into this TBL person table you have to mandatorily supply the values for ID name and email columns but whereas if you look gender ID it's it's not mandatory I mean you don't have a not null constraint you're saying that this column does allow nulls it means when you insert some of the records for some of the records you can have gender ID as null but whereas ID name and email cannot be null Okay, so let's insert a record into this TBL person table and obviously to insert a row into this table you can either do that graphically or using an insert query. Let's do it using an insert query. So insert into the table name. So I want to insert the data into this TBL person table. Now you can also specify the column list. Let's say I want to insert the values for ID, name, email and gender ID. Now gender ID, since gender ID allows null, you may or may not supply a value for that. Let's say I don't want to supply a value for that column. And then I will say values. So into this table for these columns we have to supply the values. So let's say for example the ID of the person is going to be uh, 7 and the name of the person may be rich and maybe their email r at r dot com okay now if you look at this row that we are going to insert we haven't supplied gender ID and since it's nullable column it means this column allows null so when I execute this query and when we select the rows from this table you should see that rich record has got null there okay now let us say when somebody doesn't supply a value now if you look at the TBL gender table for example here okay if you don't know the you know gender of a person you know I would recommend you know I want the data to be inserted in such a way that they will get you know by default three okay so it's you know instead of storing null I want to store a default value okay if we don't know the gender of a person rather than allowing nulls there I want to insert number three so that anybody when they look at this data okay rich gender ID is three so his gender is unknown okay so I want to have defaults so how do we do that using a default constraint but if you don't have a default constraint and if you don't supply a value for a nullable column then by default it will get null value there but on the other hand you can control that using a default constraint so in this case let's say anytime we insert a record into TBL person table and I don't supply a value for gender ID column I want the default number three to be inserted okay let's see how to do that so to add a default constraint okay here is the syntax altering an existing column to add a default constraint so obviously we are changing the definition of the table so we have to say alter table in this case TBL person and what do we want to do we want to add a constraint add constraint and give a meaningful name to that constraint and default and then whatever is the value in our case it's going to be 3 for gender ID column within this TBL person table so let's do that so to add the default constraint alter table and which is the table that we want to alter TBL person table so alter table TBL person now how do we want to add alter this table we want to add a constraint so add constraint 
and give the constraint a meaningful name. Since this is going to be a default constraint, I would give uh, an abbreviated form df, and then we are adding this constraint to this table. So include the table name as well, so TBL person. And for which column we are adding that? We are adding it for gender ID column. So specify the gender ID column as well. So just by looking at the name, the constraint name, you can say, OK, this constraint is for TBL person table. And it's a default constraint for which column gender ID. So give a meaningful name to your constraint. And then what type of constraint is this? This is a default constraint and you can specify the value. In our case, the value is going to be 3, 4, gender ID column. So 3, 4, gender ID. OK, so when we execute this query, look at that. If you look at the TBL person table now, if you expand constraints, you don't have anything there. But once we can create this constraint, we should get that there. So let's execute this query. So command completed successfully. Now if I go ahead and refresh the constraints folder of TBL person, we should see the default constraint created there. Now let's insert. If you look at the records in TBL person table now, we've got seven records and Rich has got null. Now let us say I want to insert somebody here like Mike. And his ID is 8. And let us say myketor.com. And if you look at this query, we are still not supplying the gender of this person, Mike's gender. Now, but we have added a constraint. So what should happen now, if you do not supply a value for gender ID column, then this constraint you know, will insert default value, which is 3, for the gender ID for Mike. So let's see how, you know, Let's execute and see what happens. So when I execute this, one row has been affected. And if you select all rows, look at this. For Mike, we didn't supply a value, so it took the default. But on the other hand, if I supply a value, let us say I'm going to enter somebody, uh, you know, I'm going to pass the gender ID as well, because I know the gender ID of the person. And let's say I'm going to say this time, Sarah. Let's say her email ID is sr.com and I want to supply gender ID for her. I know she is a female, so I'm going to pass the value for that. So when you pass the value, you're specifically saying Sarah's gender ID is 1. So, so now the default will not be kicking in. So this value will be stored for Sarah. So when I execute that and when you check TBL person, you should see her gender ID, which we have supplied. And finally, let's do this. Let's say I'm going to insert maybe John's record, whose ID is going to be 10. We already have John, so let's say Johnny, for example. Let's say his email ID is j at r.com. Now, I am passing in the gender ID, but I am specifically saying I don't know his gender. So I'm just going to say null. So you are specifically passing null value, which means will the default be assigned or will it not be assigned? Now let's execute and see what happens. So I executed that query. Johnny is the latest record that we have inserted. And if you look at the result, for Johnny, it didn't take the default. Why? Because if you supply a value, even if it is null, you know, the default will not be executed. Okay, instead the value that you have supplied will be, you know, inserted into the table. But in the other case, if you miss the value or if you don't supply a value, that's when default will be considered. Okay, so we have seen how to alter an existing column to add a default constraint. It's also possible that when you're creating a table, or if you want to add a new column to a table for an existing table and you want to have a default for that column, it is still possible adding a new column with the default value to an existing table. And this is the syntax, alter table and the table for which you want to add this new column. You add that column, specify the data type, whether it allows nulls or not, and then constraint, give it a meaningful name and the default value for that. Okay, and how to drop a constraint? You know, you can use alter table command, drop constraint, and the constraint name. Okay, so if we want to drop this constraint, we can use drop constraint statement. 
But before that, we have to use alter table. So alter table tbl person drop constraint and the name of the constraint. So in our case, the name of the constraint is this one. So when I press F5, the constraint will be dropped. So if we refresh this constraints folder on the left hand side, that should be gone. So it's possible to assign a default to a column using the default constraint. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET and C-Sharp interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.